So in this section, we're going to use determinants to solve matrix equation, and we're going to see, and then we're going to see the geometric interpretation of the determinant. So suppose that A is an invertible n by n matrix, then for any vector b in our n, then we know that there is a unique solution x of the given matrix equation ax equals to b, but the Kramer's rule states that the ith entry of the solution equals to this fraction. So here, a sub i of b is the matrix where ith column of a is replaced by the vector b. So this vector b replaces ith column of the given matrix. So let us see why the given statement is true. So suppose that a is given by this matrix and i to be the identity matrix. And let us write ax equals to b, where b is the vector given by b sub 1 to b sub n. Then let's look at a times i sub i of the vector x. So here, i sub i x is the matrix that you replace ith column of the identity matrix to the given vector x. So we have the vector x in the ith column, and the rest of the column vectors remains the same. And this equals to ae1 through ax, and so on, until ae sub n. And here, we know that, so here we have a times x equals to b, and a times e sub i are the ith column of the given matrix A. So this gives you a sub 1, a sub 2, and so on. And on the ith column, we have b, and the rest are the column vectors of A. And by definition, this whole matrix equals to the matrix A replace ith column with b, and if you take the determinant for the both sides, then this gives you determinant of a i sub i x equals to the determinant of a sub i of the vector b. And the left hand side equals to determinant of a times determinant of i sub i of x. So if you divide by the determinant of a for the both sides, then that gives you determinant of i sub i x equals to the determinant of a sub i of b over the determinant of a. And the left hand side certainly equals to the ith entry of x. So let us apply the Kramer's rule to solve the system of equation below. So here we have a equals to 3, negative 2, negative 5, and 4 and b equals to 6 and 8. So from here, we have a1 of b equals to, so we place the first column with the vector b, so that equals to 6, 8, negative 2, and 4, and a sub 2 of b, well, this equals to 3, negative 5, and 6, and 8. So Kramer's rule gives you x1 equals to the determinant of a sub 1b, which is 6, negative 2, 8, 4, over the determinant of a, 3, negative 2, negative 5, and 4, that equals to 24 minus negative 16, over 12 minus, I guess it's 10, that gives you 40 over 2, which is 20, and x2 equals to the determinant of a to b, which is 3, 6, negative 5, 8, over... So we have already calculated the determinant of a, which equals to 2, and this gives you 24 minus negative 30 over 2, that equals to 54 over 2, which is the same as 27. So, there is an application to engineering about the Kramer's rule. So, if you attend 20 to 80 or 20 to 50, 
like these are the differential equation classes, and we're gonna apply the Kramer's rule to the Laplace transformation. This is a tool for solving differential equation, and the Laplace transformation convert system of differential equations into the linear system. But in our section, we're going to focus on solving the system of linear equations. So here, we have system of linear equations with unspecified parameter. So what this means is the solution set x1 and x2 will be the function of t. So let us pause the video and try to find out x1 and x2 using the Kramer's rule before I give you the solution. Okay, so let's solve this problem together. So here we have a equals to 2t, 5, and 10, and t, and a sub 1 of b equals to, so you, so you replace the first column by 3 and 3, so you get this, and a2 of b equals to 2t, 10, and 3, and 3. So first of all, we know that the determinant of a equals to 2t squared minus 50, or if you factor out by 2, this gives you 2 times t squared minus 25, or this is the same as 2 times t minus 5, and multiply by t plus 5. So this tells you that the linear equation ax equals to b has a unique solution when t is not equal to plus minus 5. Because if t is either 5 or minus 5, then you have the determinant equals to 0. Okay, so if you apply the Kramer's rule, then this gives you x1 equals to... So the determinant of a sub 1, b, which is 3, 5, 3t, three, divided by the determinant of a, which equals to 2t minus 5, t plus 5. And this is the same as 3t minus 15 over 2 times t minus 5, t plus 5. Equivalently, if you factor out by 3, we get 2t minus 5, t plus 5. And if you cancel out t minus 5 for the both sides, that gives you 3 over 2t plus 5. And for x2, by the same argument, we have 2t, 3, 10, and 3 on the numerator. In the denominator, we have the determinant of a again. And this gives you 6 times t minus 30 over 2 times t minus 5, t plus 5. Or again, if you factor out by 6, then this gives you t minus 5 on the numerator, and the denominator equals to the determinant of a. And again, if you cancel out this 2, then that gives you 3 over t plus 5. So this way, we can get the solution set without doing any kinds of row operations. Kramer's rule gives us a formula for an inverse matrix. So the theorem states that if a is an invertible matrix, then the inverse matrix is given by 1 over determinant of A multiplied by the adjugate matrix of the given matrix A. So here, ADJ of A denotes the adjugate matrix, which is the transpose matrix of the cofactor matrix. So let's see the reason why. So if A is invertible matrix, then there exists the inverse matrix A inverse. So let us write this one as to be x1 through x sub n. Then if you multiply A into the inverse matrix of A, then this gives you A times x1 through xn. Then this equals to Ax1 through Axn. But here, a times A inverse certainly equals to the identity matrix I, and the identity matrix can be written as the whole bunch of standard unit vectors. So if you compare the column vectors each other, 
then we can tell that ax1 should equals to e1 and ax2 equals to e2 and so on until axn equals to en. So here, let us apply the Kramer's rule to axj equals to ej. Then the Kramer's rule tells you that the ith entry of xj can be calculated by the determinant of the matrix A, but we have to replace the ith row of A into ej, and then we have to divide this by the determinant of A. But if you keep track of ith entry of xj, so here, xj is the jth column of the inverse matrix of A. So you can tell that the ith entry of xj is in fact the ij entry of the inverse matrix of A. So indeed, this calculates the component of the inverse matrix of the given matrix A. So here, the determinant of A sub i e j is by definition, you replace the ith column of A by e j. So we have e j in the ith column and the rest remains the same. So it's i plus 1 through A sub n. But here, e sub j is in fact equals to 0, 0 and so on. So the only non-zero entry of E sub j is at j's row, and the rest are just zero. So this vector is at i-th column, and this is at j-th row. So if you calculate the determinant by this cofactor expansion, then this gives you negative 1 to the i plus j, multiplied by determinant of, so you killed j's row and i-th column, so you get a sub j-i. And this is indeed j-i cofactor element of A. So for example, like if A was given by 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 3, 0, 1, 7, then A sub 1, E2 equals to so we have to replace the first column by E2. So we have 0, 1, 0 on the first column. Then this gives you the determinant of A sub 1, E2 equals to 0 times C11. So basically we are expanding along with this column. So that gives you 1 times C21 plus 0 times c31, which really gives you c21. So this thing is happening on the calculation above over here. So from here, we can tell that A inverse equals to 1 over determinant of A multiplied by determinant of A sub i, e sub j, but this equals to 1 over determinant of A C sub j i, but this is indeed the transpose matrix of the cofactor matrix, or you can also write this as 1 over determinant of A times C transpose, where C transpose is given by C11, C21, and so on, Cn1, and C1n, C2n, till c n n and we call this c transpose to be the aggregate matrix of a and we simply denote c transpose to be a d j of a so if you use the formula we can prove that the two by two matrix has an inverse which is given by that so basically we know that the inverse matrix of A is given by 1 over determinant of A multiplied by C11, C21, C12, C22. And here we have C11 equals to negative 1 to the 1 plus 1. 
And if you remove the first row and first column, then the remaining entry is A22 and C12 equals 2. And now we have negative 1 to the 1 plus 2. And we have to eliminate the first row and the second column, which gives you A21. And C21 equals 2, again, negative 1 to the 2 plus 1. And this time, we delete the first column and the second row, which gives you A12. And lastly, C22 equals to negative 1, 2 plus 2. I guess it is A11. So here, if you plug this into there, we get A inverse equals to 1 over determinant of A. And I guess we have A22, negative A12, negative A21, and A11. Okay, so for three by three cases, we have to calculate nine different things. So let us pause the video and try to calculate all the cofactors of the given matrix A. Okay, so let us calculate all these things together. So C11 equals to negative one to the one plus one, and the determinant of three one negative two one, which gives you 3 minus minus 2, that equals to 5. And C12 equals to negative 1 to the 1 plus 2. And this time, we have to eliminate the first row and the second column. So that gives you 0, 1, 2, and 1. And this equals to, I guess, 2. And if you do all these calculations, you will get the following result. Okay, so using all these things, we can cook off the aggregate matrix of the given matrix A. So basically, the aggregate matrix of A is a transpose of the cofactor matrix, which is given by 5, 0, 5, 2, 3, and negative 1, and I guess negative 6, 6, and 3. So here, one thing that I want to note is we don't actually have to calculate the determinant to find the inverse matrix of A. So by the inverse matrix formula, we have A inverse is given by ADJ of A over the determinant of A. So here, if you multiply by A for the both sides, we get A, A inverse equals to A times ADJ of A over determinant of A. But we know that the left-hand side equals to the identity matrix. So if you multiply by the determinant of A for the both sides, that gives you A times ADJ of A equals to the determinant of A times the identity matrix. So let's multiply A by ADJ of A. So A times ADJ of A equals to... So A was given by 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 3, and 1. 2, negative 2, and 1. And ADJ of A is given above by 5, 0, 5, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 6, 6, and 3. And this equals to, I guess, 15. And 0, 0, 0, 15, 0, 0, 0, and 15. That equals to 15 times I3. So here we can conclude that the determinant of A should equal to 15, and A inverse should be 1 15th of ADJ of A, that equals to 1 over 15, 5 over 5, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 6, 6, and 3. Okay, so let us see what the determinant mean in geometry. So let's first consider a 2 by 2 diagonal matrix, which is given by A0, 0, 0, D then we know that the determinant has to be A times D. So for example, A times D corresponds to the area of a rectangle made of the column vectors of A. So if this vector is A0 and that vector is 0D, then the area of this rectangle should equal to A times D. So in this case, the determinant of A gives you the area of rectangle given by the columns of A. Okay, so let's see some facts about the determinant of the given matrix A. 
So first of all, we know that row swaps does not change the determinant of A. And second, row replacement, so adding multiple of one row to another row, does not change the determinant as well. And the determinant is the same as the determinant of the transpose matrix. Oh, I should have mentioned that the row swaps does not change the absolute value of the determinant because they can actually switch the signs. But from the third fact, the rows of A is the same as the columns of A transpose. So that tells you the column swaps and adding one column to another column does not change the absolute value of the determinant. So let us see what the column swaps do to the area of the parallelogram. So first of all, if you have a parallelogram whose legs are V and U, so in this case, A corresponds to V and U. So here, if you swap the columns of A, that gives you the matrix B equals to U and V, and that corresponds to the parallelogram, which is given by U below and V above. And because of the symmetry, we know that the area of the parallelogram does not change. And second, so let me quickly copy the first case above. So if you do the row replacement, like multiplying C into V, and then add this to U, and then replace this to U, then you will get a matrix B equals to V and CV plus U. And geometrically, so originally we had V here and U there, and adding C times V into U will move your vector into any point on the purple line. And again, the area of the new parallelogram does not change because this quantity had been moved exactly to that place. And we know that we can reduce A into diagonal matrix using 1 and 2. So basically, because 1 and 2 does not change the area of the parallelogram, this implies even though you reduce the given matrix into the diagonal matrix, the area does not change. And this tells you the area is indeed the absolute value of the determinant of A. So theorem 8 summarizes what we have done so far. So if A is 2 by 2 matrix, then the area of the parallelogram defined by the columns of A equals to the determinant of A. And in 3D case, the volume of the parallel pipe is exactly the same as the absolute value of the determinant of A. Suppose that T is a linear transformation defined by 2 by 2 matrix A. And let's say S is the parallelogram in R2, then the area of the transformed object is the same as the, the determinant of A times the area of S. And at the same time, if S is given by the parallel pipe in 3D space, then the volume of T of S equals to the determinant of A times the volume of S. So basically, the determinant of A really gives you the scaling factor. So for example, if you have like S in a shape in this way, and if you transformed S with the linear transformation T, and let's say the image of S to be this one, say A, then A equals to the absolute value of determinant of T times the area of S.